Okay, so this is the first lecture. So I try to make it um, as elementary as possible. If you have any question, please ask me. If it's anything which confuses you, must be something wrong with my lecture. So because everything should be so standard. So my main um, object of my lecture is about the elliptic curve. So for simplicity today, I want to have elliptic curve of a rational number. So it will give in by a Westras equation. And you want to have a discriminant non-vanishing. So we care about uh, the, the group of rational points. So it is a group. As usual, you probably, in any first book of the elliptic curve, you will have uh, the group law defined by, by lines. You have a P, Q, R. So you, you get this one, the S here. The P plus Q. S. It was noticed by Poincaré that if you P and Q both are rational, the sum will be rational, so this will become a group. It was conjectured by Poincaré that this is, the group of rational points is finitely generated. So this is actually the theorem proved by, by Model in the 1920s. Finite group. So write the G of Q of a torsion. So this is, a, this is the model, V theorem. And the over rational number is actually completely due to model. And the EQ part of a tall part is actually not very big. And this one by a theorem Barry Mather, I guess is less than 16 or less equal than 16, I forget. And then uh, the R part is not really, we don't know how to, how big the R part is, but there is a, um, the fork is a conjecture that R equals zero for 50% of elliptic curve, and, uh, but you have to uh, order it by some way. The original conjecture is ordered by a conductor, but you also can order by height, right? Like, like so you, with certain order. And R, R equals one, it's for another 60, for another 50%. So it's a remarkable uh, theorem recently proved by uh, proved by Manjo Bhagava a few years ago. And uh, recently for rank zero, and recently by Bhagava, Skinner, and Wei Zhan. This actually is true for R equals zero. So at least, I mean, for at least, I guess at least maybe 30% of E, and R equals one for at least 60 and 66% of E. I don't know, I don't know what exactly this number is. But anyway, it's a pretty big positive. R equals one. Second, second line, zero or one. Yeah, instead of saying R equals one. R equals one. I didn't say R equals one. Oh, no, 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 that's right. I mean, this is a bit confused. 30% divided by two, the 15% maybe. Maybe 40%. <laughs> this is much less, I guess. Like 15, at least this one. You have to divide by two for both of them. 
Okay, so that's a, a, a very remarkable work. But one thing you find that in particular, particular for r equals 1, is at least 30%. So the one question we ask is that, how can you construct such a, a point there? So this is probably one of my purpose of my lecture. The question will be how to construct how to construct points in E of Q. Right. I can make this more precise. And this took, um, I guess, took like last 60 years uh, from Hingener, um, Fountain's wires, and until Gurzagi, probably the best result in number theory, the best work in number theory always have something to do with this question, how to construct rational points of the elliptic curve. So we start with the work of the Fountain's. And, uh, and the wires. So, so he, instead of construct these points, you also got, want to construct. You give x as a variety. You probably want to construct the points from e of x. This is a home from x to e. If you uh, fix one point here, say p here, so it's a is a market point, then I can um, make a requirement to put a, a, some zero here. So I want P mapped to zero. Right. You can ask this question. Then this will be a group. According to Fortin's, if I write a zero here, I just make a P to zero. Then E zero of X, if it turns a, uh, um, ZP of Z is basically isomorphic to the home of uh, P is a prime, the TP of E, TP of the Jacobian of X. And this one, this is, this is a tetra module I'm going to explain later. This is a Homomorphs and compatible with as a Galois group, Q bar of Q. So this is a remarkable work. This is a work for a variety of high dimension. The existence of X points is equivalent to some statement about a, about a Galois group. This is why the color representation is very important in arithmetic geometry. Right? This is a, the Taylor's conjecture. This is the Taylor's conjecture. And the proof by Fortins in 1983. Okay, so now we want to specialize this X be a modular curve. of uh, the P1 of Q. So this gamma is in the uh, SR2Z, something called a congruent subgroup. Then uh, this X we are defined X we will define, X is, a, this one is just the Riemann surface, right? The Riemann surface. And uh, once this thing, X has a model, has a canonical model. So define over certain, uh, over certain Q, I write a gamma here, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a finite, it's a number field inside uh, maximum building extension of Q. So nevertheless, I still concede. So I still concede 
x as a curve over. So this is uh, called absolutely connected. This one spec of q. So I still consider x as a curve over q, but it's not uh, absolutely connected. So we can um, apply this Fortin theorem to this modular curve. And I make some requirement because I have a, uh, this one is a cusps. But this cusps may, may not be necessarily defined over rational number. But they are, um, you can, uh, so you can require the following. So I can require the E0 of x, um, maybe a tensor Q. At least I can define this model be home of zero of x of e tensor q, but I require the cusp goes to a torsion point. Then you apply the Fortin theorem, you will get e zero of x tensor qL or qP. Up here is isomorphic to the homomorphism of VP of E and VP of Jacobian of X. So it's a Galois group. Okay. Now is the next uh, very important theorem, major theorem by. So this is not zero. This is by something called modularity. Why oh, tell us? Or tell why? And, uh, and many and completed by and, uh, by our. Uh, um, Conrad, I'm trying to try to remember Broy. Broy, Conrad, Diamond, Taylor, right again? Okay. So, the, so this is like in the 1995 to 2000. I don't know. So this is next major result. The two major results combined together just tell you that, well, even I don't know, my elliptic curve with rational points, at least has a modular curve point. Right. So this is, a, this is why I say that so the question to construct a rational point on the elliptic curve is really uh, accumulate the most important result in number theory in the last uh, 30 years. OK, now I come to uh, some idea about a thing in there. OK, so after uh, Fortin's and wires, we know that any elliptic curve will be parametrized by a modular curve. Uh, now, uh, now the question is, if you want to construct a point on an elliptic curve, maybe you, it's sufficient to construct a point on a modular curve. Right? So that's the Hingener's idea. I will come back to Hingener how he exactly worked on this thing. So he fixed, so the fix, OK. The imaginary quadratic field is d is less than zero. We suppose this one invented the complex number. So then, uh, what's going on? That instead of uh, consider this upper plane, you can uh, replace upper plane by this k over gamma. Right. So these are called CM points. In the second so they're the major quadratic points. This one's the inside of this x. And the priori is the inside x of c. So in fact, it's inside xk of ab. So this is by the CM theory. So 
you fix a point, so let f be a homomorphism from x to e, so something called a modular parametrization, I can continue this, this picture there to e of kab. So I got many points on uh, e k a b and all the image of these points on uh, maybe I should call it Hingham points here I call it uh, 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 c m points you can do uh, much better uh, in the sense that this one has action by a color group of k a b of k so I mean you can show that this there's a set is a stable and this is the action so the image of these points is basically uh, it's a it's a Galois module of the uh, Hingham points so in this case I want to do something slightly better by uh, taking a character. So I started with a, that chi be a character from Galois, KB of K to complex number. So this is a finite character. Then I, 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 I can fix the one point here. So the fix of this one is a fix a P inside, let me, of the CM of gamma, I fix F inside X of uh, E of X, I have zero here. Then I can, can see it. I use this notation purposely make you confused with this P and this P, and this P will be referred to as the periods. F of gamma here defined to be integration of Galois KB of K of F of P of sigma chi sigma d sigma. Well, I mean, I just write in a very fancy way that um, I can do maybe slightly better. So this is actually, it's a, it's really, it's a, this is really a, a finite sum, you know, maybe one over d, whatever. Some finite sum, if I write it, the f in, and sigma inside Galois of L of k, right? Uh, if you want to write on this way, uh, it's fp of sigma, chi of sigma. So this d will be, um, I mean, K, L will be K joined with P, D, um, probably a bit more than that, doesn't matter. So L is a sentence, L is some field in the KAB, number field inside the K, it's a Galois there, and the D is a degree L of K. So I write in this very fancy integration because I want to make a comparison with the lecture I'm giving tomorrow, but in fact, it's really a final sum. It's not that scary, scary. Can you write the name of that point? You said you're going to refer to it by a certain phrase. So this point? Yeah, you, you called it something. Period. Period is the integral. Okay, so, so this is the point uh, inside E to AB tensor 
is a C. So the question, the main concern of this, the thing is that when um, when is the p of chi not zero? So we construct a point there. We want to see when this is not zero. Okay, now I want to talk about the origin of all this construction. All this construction and the famous problem, the girls number one, girls class number one problem, is written in a bizarre paper of Hingner in 1952. The Hingner 1952. So in the one single paper, he solved the Gauss class number one problem. Also, giving infinitely many um, examples of their prime congruent number. So this is why I can describe his work. So there, he introduced these kind of points. Of course, in the Hingner's Time, he cannot study general elliptic curve, there's no modularity. So he only studied very special elliptic curve, he knows it is modular. And uh, so that's a modular curve he studied, is E y squared s cubed minus x. So that's a, that's a curve he studied. This actually is, has a CM by uh, Q of i. So the conductor of this curve Is 32, and he didn't know all this thing. Anyway, he constructed, um, he constructed an explicit um, morphism from x of h to uh, e. Um, this day we can do better. We can say x zero of 32, but he he constructed an explicit map from x a to e by um, by computing all these modular these uh, um, elliptic functions. And not only that, he also take n uh, be a prime be either a prime p is congruent to 5, 7, mod 8, or 2p congruent to 6, mod 8. And he can see this k, I go q square root of negative n. And uh, he can write this in. Also, he constructed a, a special points, some special points, CM points. P inside CM, you know, this gamma D2. And uh, he basically study and study. And his, his basic theorem is the following. Prove the following very remarkable theorem. He proved that. So, in the terminology I write on, the P, F, so this is, a, this is a, uh, the trivial character, the trivial character, chi zero, the trivial character. Um, he, he showed that the theorem he proved that this one is not zero. He basically comes a point, shows them non-zero by by certain miracle method. We're not going to describe that. What? Yes. And the consequently. 
it proved the following. So the consequence is the following. I mean, the reason to prove that because you see this p of f of chi zero is basically inside e of k. E of k is basically is a model e of q and the direct sum e n e n of q. E n of q is a elliptic curve of n y square equals x q minus x. So the consequence, because this one is a more or less trivial, E of Q has only, only have torsion points. You don't have non-torsion points. So consequently, so the rank E N of Q is bigger than zero. Right. So that's basically what Hingen approved it. A proof of fixed elliptic curve, the infinite many quadratic twist has a positive rank. And then this elliptic curve is not an arbitrary one. Uh, well, it's a very simple one, but it has a very long history. So this elliptic curve is the one studied by, um, probably by much earlier time, of the congruent number problem. So, so equivalently, that, so this n is a congruent number. So this, by definition, means that it is the area of a pi green triangle. I can write in the triangle precisely, so you can have a diagram here. Pattern triangle means that you want to find um, a right angle to triangle with three sides, a rational number. The area is the n. But if this elliptic curve has a solution, then you can construct this triangle very easily. You get this one area, so x squared minus 1 divided by y. Another one is 2x divided by y. This is one x squared plus 1 divided by y. That's basically the right triangle you can construct from the solution of elliptic curve. Okay, so if you uh, have a chance to look at the hang of the paper, that's a very interesting one. In the first four pages, he just described the congruent number problem. Then he trying, he trying to construct a solution. In the middle of the page, suddenly, he switched the congruent class number one problem, he claimed that he solved the class number one problem. Uh, that's a very remarkable paper. As we know, Hingen is, um, um, is not a professional, uh, is not a professor, university professor. He's probably teaching uh, Germanis, right? It's like a high school, whatever. And uh, this is a paper he wrote when he was 59 years old. And uh, um, it's remarkable that uh, he can manage uh, uh, this uh, complex multiplication and uh, using this pretty, I mean, today, a pretty modern idea to solve the Dijkman equation. So, uh, uh, Sayer uh, sometimes says that uh, the modularity of the elliptic curve really goes back to Hingen. So, he's the really first person to use the modularity of the elliptic curve to solve a Dijkman problem. Non-torsion, yeah, I mean the non-torsion. Oh, my peer is already turns to C, so it's, uh, so it's okay. Yeah. Hing and I work, work um, at the very beginning, people believe Hing and work has some gap, and it took, I guess, uh, 18 years, how many years? 68. In 1968, people start to believe what he has done is correct. 
Uh, but that's already, uh, sadly, he already died four years early before he knows his work was <coughs> recognized by community. Okay, now the, finally, I want to talk about the Gorozagia formula. So there is some assumption which are Birch called Hingen condition, but Hingen never used this condition. So it's called a Hingen condition by Birch. Hingen the Birch condition, Hingen condition, are called by by Birch. Uh, for um, people who are interested in the history of the Grozagia formula, you will see one book. Um, it's edited by me and uh, Henry Daumon. That's the, uh, the, for the uh, MSRI workshop uh, in 2001, where we, we go through all this uh, historical part. So in this assumption, the first of all, you want x. I don't want to concede x not of n, we only consider this kind of elliptic curve. This n is the conductor of E. And uh, is the first assumption. Second one, I want is the D. The D will be this k. Remember, this k is called q, square root of D. I want the D to be order and congruent to n. The last part, and also we require that any p divided n implies a p split in k. So the last part, we want a chi, we only consider chi will be unramified. So this is a, uh, this, this condition called the Hingen condition where well, this is just assumption which uh, grows, and the idea too. Only 10 o'clock. Is there any question? So these this conditions has two consequences. Well, there, so then um, the theorem proved that. Let me write on two parts. The first part is that if this pf of chi is non-zero, if and only if, that certain um, special value of error function that vanishes. So I need to explain a little bit of that. So this RF, you know, or I didn't write it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. This F, uh, I'm writing, I'm writing E here, probably is better. Actually, it's the same thing. So this F, LE, chi S, is a ranking separate convolution. of a two error function, error ES and error chi S. So it's a degree four error function. Because it's a chi, it's a uh, character. So if you're writing very precisely, it's like, uh, um, so it's like, uh, L E I S. You have L E S is summation A N and S is power. And this one we will write on. It will be summation 
A, uh, you normalize by idea. Um, idea, norm this idea, this chi of S. So this is the idea inside O of K, something like that. Probably needed to normalize by some fact. And uh, the Hingman condition, let me write down these remarks. This is not part of the theorem, I just explained that. The Hingman condition uh, implies that this L, um, well, L e of chi of S. Um, has an order function equation. So first of all, priori this one has a is a holomorphic, has a is a holomorphic um, continuation to to whole complex plane. And it satisfies certain function equation. The thing in the condition basically imply that this one we have order function equation will be if I complete this in by some gamma function, then this is uh, it's almost like equal to negative Le chi 2 minus s. So in particular, Le chi 1 equals 0. So the derivative is the first number you want to consider. The Gorzaghi theorem says that uh, this pure z integral is non-vanishing if and only if that the derivative of L function that vanish. Okay. Um, oh yeah, once I get a confused, I, I forget to say that. Uh, I didn't define this one precisely. Let me write it down. Sorry. Um, this is the one. Second part is P of chi is defined using a canonic CM points. So the same point is on x not of n, and then this x not of n, so it's in fact, what's going on, this x not of n, first of all, by have a modular interpretation, probably in the next lecture you can see that, it is given by, this one is a pair matrix, is equal to all the pair matrix e1 to e2 of phi, kernel of phi is isomorphic to z mod n z, cyclical group. So the same points you can choose uh, is the canonical one. So this P I going to choose will be C take O of K map to C of something idea. Right? Inverse. This is a this is the idea. Such as O of K mod N is a sum of the Z of N Z. The existence of this uh, Of n is also guaranteed by, you see, guaranteed by the Hingman condition. The Hingman condition have two consequences. One consequence about the error function, one consequence of the Hingman point. Okay, so this is uh, one theorem of the uh, of Zagier. But in fact, they prove much more than these.
So the Gonzaga formula. Is um, so maybe I write on the following. So if you can, if we can see it, the p f of chi p f of chi as a narrow tailed hyperion is a narrow tailed hyperion. This is equal to. This called an H of K. This is a, a class number. This is a, a half of uh, units there, divided by eight pi square of the Peterson product. This is the one you can have. Let me write down for the degree of F. No, that's probably. It doesn't matter. So let me try just right in there. F and F times L prime of F chi one. So this is actually this is a degree of F. You remember this F is a is a morphism from X not of N to E. So in this way you have a degree of F there. You divide by degree. This is essentially uh, the theorem of Gorozagia. I guess I finished everything I want to say on the talk, unless you have some question. Did you say what the U is in the numerator? Oh, U is the units. Okay, cross. <laughs>